Let's take a look at graphing on a T83 Plus Silver Edition. The first one we'll take a look at is Y is equal to X. Now these are the basic building blocks uh, that you use to graph anything in algebra. So um, even though you may know what these look like, it's important to understand how to put them into your calculator because these will com um, be combined to, for tougher graphs. Okay. Y is equal to X. I'm going to press my Y equals. Press my clear to clear out wherever's on the line. Then I'll put in my X key. This sets X, T, theta, little m. And then I press graph. And that would be your answer. So it looks like that. Uh, let's say you got an error. And at some point uh, in time when you're using your calculator, you will screw it up. Um, so this shows you how to fi fix most errors. So if you want to um, follow along, you can deliberately put errors in yours and, and recreate these, uh, what I'm going to show you. I press Y equals to get back here. You can freely go back and forth doing Y equals and graph. And exit out of anything on your T83 Plus Silver Edition, you do a second mode, and that'll get you out. Okay. You see across top says plot 1, plot 2, and plot 3. I'm going to up arrow, put my flashing cursor on plot 1, and press enter one time. And now down arrow. And you see now it's highlighted. Well, if you go to graph and you have one, one or more of those highlighted, if you press graph, one of three things will happen. This is uh, one of the things that happen. You get an error, invalid dim. Second thing that might happen is it might actually work, uh, where you see nothing wrong with it. And third thing is it'll work, but you'll have extra garbage on your screen, like extra boxes or something. Anyway, I'll press enter and quit here. I'll go back to Y equals. To take the highlighting off, you press your up arrow, put your flashing cursor on whichever one's highlighted, and you press enter one time. And then you down arrow. And you should see the highlighting off of it. Now, a second thing to look for. We've got Y1 through Y7. Occasionally, people come down here to Y0. And they'll have extra garbage here. They'll put a bunch of uh, commas, parentheses, or something like that. Then they go to graph this. And it gives them syntax error. Well, your natural inclination is to quit as highlighted. You just press enter on that. And you go into y equals. And you think, well, that's weird. And you see, well, it don't get much simpler than that. Maybe it was a quirk. So you try again. And it appear to be working, but it gives you syntax error again. You should always choose go to. So you want to choose the down and then do enter on go to. And that'll take you to where your error is. I used to accuse students of, uh, well, first I was asking if they had children. And when if they said no, I'd uh, uh, tell them to quit drinking while they're using your calculator. I couldn't figure out how else they'd get this uh, garbage down here. And then I had a student explain one semester. She said she throws her um, calculator into her backpack without putting the cover on. And then I could understand it. But anyway. Once you find that, then you press clear, and it'll clear that out. And then if you press graph, it'll be back to normal. The last thing is sometimes your zoom will get screwed up. To set it back to your standard viewing window, which is negative 10 to 10 on the X and negative 10 to 10 on your Y, you press zoom, and then you choose 6. And that'll set your zoom back. One uh, case where this fix, sometimes people go into window option here. And they'll change these values, like I put 20 for x min and x max is 10, which is invalid. And then if you press graph, it gives you a window range error. Well, if I press enter on that, again, press zoom, 6, we'll fix that. That probably fixes 95, 98% of the problems you run across. There are some oddball ones it doesn't, doesn't work on. Let's take a look at y is equal to x squared. Press Y equals, press clear, I do my X key, and then there's an X squared button here. And then press graph. And that gives you your answer. Let's look at Y is equal to X to the third. Now I don't really care what this looks like. What I'm demonstrating is how do you do it when you have any number in your exponent? Third power, fourth power, fifth power. If you have y is equal to x to the twentieth, you know how do you handle it? And I'll go back to y equals. Press clear to clear out wherever's not line. 
I'll do my X key and caret over here, right above the divide. This is um, how you do uh, exponent. So do caret, 3, and then graph. And it gives you that as your, as your graph. Now, fourth one we'll look at is y is equal to x to the one half. And again, I could care less what this one looks like. I'm I'm showing how do you handle it when you got any fraction up in your exponent. It's actually more than that. Anytime you have more than a single number or a single variable in your exponent, you want to put parentheses around it. So I'm going to put parentheses around the one half, and that's how I'll plug it in. So I'll press my y equals, press clear, do my x key. We always do exponent with the caret. Beginning parentheses, 1 divided by 2, closing parentheses, and graph. And that would be your answer. Okay, our fifth one. Take a look at y is equal to square root of x. Now press my y equals, press clear. Now, some things are on a button, some things are above a button. You see the x squared down here? Above it is a square root symbol. So to get to the square root, we do second x squared. It puts a square root and puts beginning parentheses. So we'll put x, and then I'll put a closing parentheses. Uh, a lot of models of TI, you don't need the closing parentheses, but I'll always put it there for completeness sake. Now press graph. And that gives us this graph here. Now it looks like the same one we just uh, graphed this one here, and that's because they are the same. Remember y is equal to x to one half is the same as the square root of x. Cube root of x is one you run across fairly often in algebra. I'll press my y equals, press my clear. Now if it's not on a button, it's not above a button, for graphing purposes you can pretty well guarantee it's going to be in the, underneath the math button. So press math, and the cube root is the fourth one down. Uh, it says a 3 and then the radical symbol in the beginning parentheses. To choose that, I can down arrow at 4 and press enter, or I can just simply press the numbers in front of it. Press the 4. And it puts a cube root and the radical symbol um, in the beginning parentheses. I'll put X, and then I'll put a closing parentheses. And then graph. And that's your answer. Okay, well, let's look at the fourth root of x. Now, I don't care what that looks like. What I'm demonstrating is how do you handle it when you got a number in that slot. So, I'm going to expel number. Let's try it again. I'll abbreviate it. Any number. You got a 4 in here, a 5. The number in this slot is called your index. Um, you could have a 20 in there. Well, this one. We're going to press our y equals, press our clear. You put your index in first. So I'll put 4 in. Then I'll go to math. And you want to choose the radical with the x for the index. So I'll choose the fifth option. So I'll press 5. Now it doesn't put the beginning parentheses on this function, so you want to make sure you put the beginning parentheses. And then x. And then your closing parentheses. And then graph. Now that'll look like the square root, but it's actually closer down to the, the x-axis like that. Now you may try that and may not put the parentheses and you get the same graph. And you think, well he's full of it. Um, I didn't need to put parentheses. You don't if it's a single x. If you got a more complicated item inside the, the radical here, it won't always work. You have to have put that beginning parentheses before you plug in whatever's inside your radical. Uh, y is equal to the absolute value of x. I press y equals, press clear, press my math, and uh, right arrow to num, and abs is our first one. So I press enter on it. It puts the abs in the beginning parentheses, so I'll put the x key and the closing parentheses on the absolute value. And then press graph. And that gives us our answer. Uh, ninth one, I don't know if I remember it or not. Uh, I think it's y is equal to x plus 2 over x minus 3. Let's go look to see if that's true. Great needs for every model of the graphing calculator, so I'm starting to remember. 
Yep, y is equal to x plus 2 over x minus 3. Now in this one, I could care less what this graph looks like. Here I'm demonstrating how do you handle fractions on your calculator. Whenever you have more than a single number or a single variable on top or bottom, you have to put parentheses around top or bottom. Uh, so we're going to have to put parentheses around top and parentheses around the bottom. If I just had a single x up on top or a single number, I wouldn't have to do that. Other than that, you just type in as you see it. So I'll press my y equals, press my clear, beginning parentheses, x plus 2, closing parentheses, divided by, beginning parentheses, x minus 3, closing parentheses. So that's how you type it in, and then you press graph. And I'll sketch this. Something like that. And um, something like that. Now these uh, these keep going forever, so they never just stop. And the vertical line you see here shouldn't be here. So when you sketch this, don't put that vertical line. Some people think it's a feature that uh, it was putting the vertical asymptote on there for you. It's not. It's a flaw. I went to TI's website and read and. And it's not a feature. Again, that's a screw up in our part. They fixed that on uh, the newer T84s and uh, the beyond. Let's take a look at our tenth example. We've got y is equal to dash square root dash x dash 3. Okay. On your calculator, you have different dashes. You have this one on the bottom. This is a negative. Then you have the one on the side that's a minus. When you're looking at a problem, if your dash is the very first of whatever, it's a negative. So this dash here is at the very first of my problem, so this is a negative. This dash is at the very first of my square root, so it's a negative. Now if your dash is between two items, then it's a minus. So that would be a minus. So let's graph this now. I'll press y equals, clear, put in my negative, square root. So we'll do second x squared, and then negative x minus 3, and then I'll put a closing parenthesis for the square root. And then I'll press graph. And that would be your answer. So it looks like this right here. Okay. Well, let's see what happens when we put the wrong dash. Um, this dash is before the x. Instead of a negative, I'll make it a minus. And press graph. You get a syntax error. Well, let's choose go to. If I down arrow to go to and press enter, it uh, will go to where the error is. Not just the line, but actually put the flashing cursor on what's screwed up. And that tells you you put the wrong dash. So you can then change it to the other one. Well, you may be saying, well, why, why the big focus on this, then, if it tells you if it's wrong? Well, let's go with this minus here. Instead of a minus, let me put a negative here and push graph. It didn't give us a syntax error. It just gave us the wrong graph. So very important you know which dash goes where. Um, if I go back to y equals, then change that to a minus, which it should be, then we get back to our original graph. Okay, this last one is a merger. I think I almost got this. Y is equal to x squared minus 3x. I can't remember the last part. I think it's square plus square root of x. This is a merger of the different uh, building blocks. <coughs> and um, remember, if you have more than a single number or a single variable in your exponent, the trick is to put parentheses around the exponent. So when I plug that in, I want parentheses around the exponent. Okay. Other than that, we type it in as we see it using our basic building blocks. So press Y equals, press clear. I do my X key. Uh, how we do exponent is always caret. Beginning parentheses, X, and then X squared, minus 3X, plus square root of X. So do second X squared, X, closing parentheses on the square root, closing parentheses on the exponent, and then graph. And that gives us our, our graph. Is that our true picture of a graph? 
probably not. Uh, TI3, TI4 is not real precise sometimes. Um, it's a, probably a pretty good estimate. Uh, to, to know what the graph really looks like, you'd have to go on to cal class um, in calculus. Uh, there you have a whole chapter of analyzing how to figure out what the graph looks like. Now, if you love plotting points, you're not really in technology. You took the class and you plotted points and you were, you were happy with plotting points. You loved them. Everybody else was happy with two or three points. You did like ten. You wanted to be the best point plotter there was. Well, this one, we know what that is. That's the parabola. That's the U-shaped graph. Or is it? Maybe what the graph is, it's a heart. You just didn't plot enough points. If you'd plot enough points, you would have saw that. Maybe the graph comes up like this, and then comes back down over here. And goes up like this, and comes back down over here. This may come down at x equals 500. Uh, you just, if you'd plotted 500 points, you would have saw it come back down. Plotting points is the worst way in the world. It only works well if you know what the graph looks like to begin with. Now think what I'm saying. You know what the graph looks like to begin with. Uh, the graphing calculator is a much better um, uh, tool to use um, for figuring out what your graph is. It allows you to focus on more of the uh, higher end thinking uh, skills in algebra versus um, basic t-chart. Now the calculator will still not tell us uh, the entire picture. This might be my viewing window right here. So my viewing window makes it look like the parabola. Um, we'll see uh, later on when we talk about leading coefficient test uh, that you can see if it's coming back down. Leading coefficient test might give us a clue, but it still won't give us the entire picture. Again, calculus is how you can get the true picture. And that was um, graphing on T83 Plus Silver Edition.